return period is a concept you often hear in uh, in the context of many geophysical variables like uh, rainfall flooding etc it is also a concept that is uh, broadly misunderstood especially by non experts so let's try to get uh, some qualitative understanding about what this concept is and what it does not claim so to do this um i will uh, take an example of a rainfall time series so um uh, this is uh, you know a database of um, rainfall time series uh, from around uh, europe i will select a time series from here and it looks uh, something like this so at the moment it's showing annual uh, average or annual total rainfall amounts but what i'm interested uh, in this uh, context of return period is the maximum rainfall so this is the maximum daily rainfall uh, observed in each year so you can see it is varying quite a bit and what i would do is download 100 years of this data as an example so um we have data until 2021 so let's start with 1922 one more point yeah 1922 to 2021 so let's download this data and open it in a spreadsheet okay so let me make uh, the screen little bit bigger and it looks like this so from 1921 every year what is the uh, maximum rainfall that was recorded now what i would do is i would select this 100 years of data and sort it data sort in a descending order that is uh, from the largest value to the smallest value like this so you can see the largest rainfall value has happened in 1995 84 mm per day uh, followed by 2000 and 1927 after that and like that and then i'm going to make a graph of this let's make a, a plot like this and let me change the axis a little bit so that it can be easier for us to look at the graph okay now what does this graph say now in this 100 years it says that the value of 45.8 let's say 46 the value of 46 has exceeded only in 10 instances you can see it here only 10 rainfall amounts are larger than 46 here yeah so what does this mean if this is a true representation of the behavior of this rainfall in this particular place that means during the 100 years there is 10 in 100 that means 1 in 10 or 0.1 1 in 10 chance in any given year that rainfall can be more than 46 mm that is called the exceedance probability let's take another example um let's take this time this one that is 40 mm 20 years so there is only 20 years where the rainfall has exceeded 40 mm that means there is a 1 in 5 chance in a given year 1 in 5 chance in a given year that uh the rainfall will ex exceed 40 mm now how do we convert this idea into return period it is very simple so what we do is return period is simply the reciprocal of the exceedance probability so only 20 out of 100 events are annual maximum events are uh, larger than 40 uh, that means 1 in 5 chance so this is 0.2 so this is how we do that uh, calculation let me let us go through an example maybe uh, let's say that exceedance probability equals 
um, 30 events in 100, right? That means exceedance probability is 3 divided by 10. Then the return period is 10 divided by 3, which is not a nice number, but 3.3, .3, right? So this is how you calculate the return period. Now, why this is important? This is important because oftentimes we misunderstand the concept of return period. We think that return period of 100 means if an event happened today of this magnitude, that is 100 year return period event, then in our lifetime we will not see another event like that. That is not so because this is only probability. So even in the next year we can again have uh, you know, similar magnitude event or higher magnitude event. So this, even though we, for convenience, we say that it has the chance of happening once in 100 years, we should not misunderstand that it indicates something called periodicity. That is, if it happened today, it will not happen for another 100 years. No, there is nothing like that. To understand this better, let me uh, show this spreadsheet that I use to explain this concept. So this is uh, these are years 2025 all the way to 2344. I have just broken down into uh, rows of 10 uh, just to conveniently show it here. So what you can do with this spreadsheet is put a return period here. Let's say um, 50, once in 50 years. Then this will show you a sort, sort of one possible manifestation of that. So you know, this represents what it it is like to have a 50-year return period. So in this particular case, yeah, here one, one event happened, then immediately after eight more years, another event happened. So that's quite possible. And sometimes we can go without event for quite a long time. But on average, if you count this number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on average, more or less, if you divide that by the total number of years, you should get 50. That's all it says. For example, if you look at 10 years, it may look like this. Or another time, it may look like this. Now look at this one. This is, this is very interesting. 2,166, we had the event. Immediately next year, 67, we had the event. One year, no event. And next year, again. Does this say that our estimation is wrong? Not necessarily. Because this, this can happen because we are talking about probabilities. 100-day event. So in summary, uh, return period is the reciprocal of exceedance probability. Uh, so return period is essentially an expression of probability or likelihood. It does not say anything about whether if an event happened today, can it happen tomorrow again? It doesn't say anything like that. What it says is that in a sufficiently long period of time, what is the average frequency an event can happen?